Hello Grade 8s! Welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences presented by Mrs. Ernston. If you have any questions during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. I am so glad that you could join us for today's lesson. It's on the building blocks of matter and subatomic particles. I'd like you to be ready for the lesson, so please make sure you have your pens and paper and files and books ready. So if you need to press pause and go and get all of those things, please do. Otherwise, let's get on with what the lesson is about today. So we're going to have a look at what is matter made up of and what do elements look like at an atomic level and how are atoms of one ele element different to the atoms of another element. We're going to have a look at the periodic table that summarizes all the elements known to mankind according to their chemical properties. Are atoms the smallest particles making up matter or are they themselves made up of even smaller particles? What, what do scientists know about the inside of the atom and why do we say that atoms are neutral? So there's lots to get through in this lesson. I hope you're ready. The first activity we're going to do is a brainstorming activity. I need you to link what you already know about elements from grade 7 matter and materials with the new ideas that you're going to learn today. So if you need to pause the screen for the next activity, please do. You can either talk out loud or you can write everything down that you can remember about elements and the periodic table from grade 7. Okay, sure, that's quite a list. Um, but I'm sure you're definitely going to learn something new today. So, if we have a look, the world around us is made of many different materials. So, what does the word material mean in this statement? So, in science, material actually means basically any type of substance, but we can't write that in a test or in an exam. So listen up closely and let's see if we can get the terminology right this lesson. So what is matter? Matter is anything that has a mass and occupies a volume. And what we mean by that is that it takes up space. All different types of matter that exist on Earth are made up of one or more chemical elements. So, elements are relevant to scientists, but how are elements actually relevant to you? Well, if we just think about what elements make up your body, oxygen makes up 65% of your body, carbon makes up 18.5% of your body, hydrogen makes up 9.5%, nitrogen makes up 3%, and there are lots of other elements that make up the remainder. So understanding matter. Matter can be divided into two categories. One, a pure substance, and two, a mixture. And there's more about these terms and definitions in tomorrow's lesson. A substance is also divided up into two components, an element and a compound. The definition for an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into other substances by chemical methods. The definition for a compound is <clears throat> um, a compound is formed when two or more elements combine chemically and so it can be broken down chemically into its elements. So in grade 7, you should have learned that all elements have been organized in a table known as the periodic table of elements. But if you haven't covered this yet, please don't worry. We'll look more into it in future lessons. 
So the elements are arranged according to their properties. So if we have a look here, each element has a unique name, a chemical symbol, and an atomic number. So for example, if we look at the first element over here, the symbol is H. The name of the element is hydrogen, and the atomic number is 1. Elements are the building blocks of all materials. But what are elements actually made of? And if we look at the diagram here, here we have copper wires, here we have iron, and here we have gold rings. And if we take a look at a microscopic level, what do you notice about the particles in these metals? Now, I want you to think about your answer for a little bit because we're going to go and look a little bit more about metals and the periodic table, and we're going to come to answering this question a little bit later on. So, what did you notice about the particles in these metal elements? Each element consists of indivisible, minute particles called atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical. Atoms of different elements have different masses, and atoms can neither be created nor destroyed during chemical reactions. So, back to our copper and gold and iron. So where do we find metals and where do we find non-metals on this periodic table? So I've just got a slightly different periodic table here because the two different colors in this periodic table highlight quite nicely the difference between metals and, and not the difference between metals and non-metals, sorry, where do we find metals on the periodic table and where do we find non-metals on the periodic table? So if we take a line down here um, between aluminium and silicon, and as we go down here, everything to um, the left of the periodic table are known as metals, and everything to the right in yellow is known as non-metals. So I want you to try and answer this question while looking at the periodic table. It says, give the symbols of two examples of metals and two examples of non-metals. So for metals, you can pick any two symbols here from the red area, and for non-metals, you can pick any two examples from the yellow area. Now to answer the next question, we need to look a little bit more closely at the periodic table. It says the elements are arranged in, increase, in order of increasing Let's see if we can work it out. So for now, I don't want you to focus too much on the numbers that go down the side here or the numbers that go horizontally across the top. We'll learn about that a little bit later on in the series of lessons. But I want you to look a little bit more closely at each of the elements. So here, H, we have 1. And then if we move across here, HE is 2. Here, LR, which is lithium, is 3. Beryllium is 4, boron is 5, carbon 6, nitrogen 7. So to answer that question, the elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. So what is the atomic number of hydrogen and what is the atomic number of carbon? Well, the atomic number of hydrogen is 1. And the atomic number of carbon is 6. So, back to this slide again. Elements are the building blocks of all materials, but what are elements actually made up of? So, we've had a look at these elements on the periodic table and where we find them. And what do you notice when you look at these particles inside here? So firstly, those are atoms, and each element is made up of one type of particle. The tiny particles that make up an element are called atoms, and atomos is a Greek phrase which means not cut or that which is indivisible. So that could help you work out why early scientists referred to these tiny particles 
as atoms. So can you match each word to its definition? So we have one atom, two element, three compound. A, a material made up of different atoms or atoms. B, the basic building block of materials. Or C, a material containing only one sort of atom. So I'll pause for a moment while you try and do these matching columns. If you need longer, you can pause the screen and let's go and have a look to see if you got your answers correct. So, an atom is the basic building block of materials, an element is a material containing only one sort of atom, and a compound is a material made up of different, of one atom or different atoms. I'm sure you got full marks there. One of the facts we spoke about earlier on was that atoms can neither be created nor destroyed during chemical reactions. So does that mean atoms are the smallest particles of matter? In actual fact, no. Atoms are made up of three different kinds of subatomic particles, and these are called electrons, protons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus at the center of the atom. So if we have a look at this diagram here, there is the nucleus at the center of the atom. So at the center of the atom, we find protons, which are linked with A+, plus, and we find neutrons that are linked with nothing. So protons are positively charged subatomic particles, and that's easy to remember. P protons are P positively charged with A+, plus, and neutrons are, negative, are neither positively nor negatively charged. They do not carry a charge. So neutrons are no, and that is why you'll notice in the diagram here, there is nothing written inside the subatomic particle for a neutron. They are neutral. Then the last subatomic particle we need to have a look at is electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. And if we have a look here, we, sorry, we find the electrons um, orbiting around the nucleus. So electrons are much smaller than protons and neutrons. Electrons are very fast moving and they actually create a cloud around the atom. So in this example here of carbon, you can see the electrons around the outside are making a cloud. Okay, so if we go back to what is written on the periodic table, let's take nitrogen as an example. The number at the top is the atomic number. And that is an indication of the number of electrons and the number of protons. Then you will either find the symbol or the name of the element, and then underneath that you find the atomic mass. So the number of protons in an atom is equal to the atomic number of the atom, and we find that on the periodic table over here. The number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, and the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the number of protons. So it's the mass number here minus the number of protons. So the number of protons is seven, for, sorry, in the case of nitrogen as an example, the number of protons is seven, which we get from the atomic number, the number of electrons is seven, which we get from the atomic number, and the number of neutrons is 7.1, and we get that by taking the atomic mass number, which is 14.1, and minusing seven. So 14.1 minus 7 gives us 7.01. Then the last little activity today you'll find on Worksheet Cloud. It is a fun activity that will allow you to be a little bit creative and it will help you understand um, whether or not you grasp the concepts of the atom and subatomic particles 
and um, it enables you to build a model of an atom. So go and see what you can scrounge around your house and see what atoms you can build. Hang on to it and when you get back to school, be sure to, to show your teacher and your class friends. That's all for now. So thanks so much for watching this lesson, Grade 8. I've had so much fun being with you today. Um, if you um, are up to it, I hope to see you in tomorrow's lesson. Bye.